Yeah, hello, Pittsburgh White Schwartz back again with another Hall Alive deck tech. Uh, joining me today is Brian. That's me, I'm here, and I'm along for the ride because I have not played any Hall Alive cards yet. I'm waiting till I have them physically in my hands. So Tanner's going to be walking us through the uh, the standby bar, the Miko Sora Hall Alive list today. So kicking it off... Uh here with the deck list um so if you just wanted the quick shot of the deck list here it is um make sure leave a like on the way out we appreciate it um but getting into the deck itself it's a pretty straightforward um, game plan you're doing one thing and you're trying to do it every turn um so going to the first card here we have the corona runner uh, 1500 power uh, on play you look at top two rearrange and at the start of your opponent's attack phase you can run to any slot in the front row so it's just a free runner uh, this is mainly played for your yellow fix so you can get you can still play your um, you can play the Matsuri stock swap um, so it's just a nice plus and zero uh, no real complaints with this card um, I, but... I w I would say this card is a little bit more relevant in this list than in others because of the uh, the first ability lets you uh, set your standbys, guarantees that you aren't triggering standby on first attack. Yep. Uh, so overall, pretty good card and definitely helps out the deck in a few different ways here. Getting into the next one, we have three copies of the Fabuki. Um, on play at pumps 1500 which is relevant in this deck you do need uh to help your mikos get reverses so this is one way to power pump and then on death it is a level one or higher uh, it is ditch one look at top four choose level one or higher and put the rest in the waiting room so Helps guarantee that you're getting those Mikos in hand, mm -hmm. helps you mill through your deck, and if you don't have a Sora already, well, there you go. Yeah, I mean, Cherry, <clears throat> ne never a bad profile, especially in a deck where you're looking for uh, specific combo pieces very early. And speaking of, uh, this is the Sora Brainstorm. It is a Rest Self Salvage Brainstormer, but it also has pay one sack it and you can put one of your characters that died and went to waiting room back on the stage rested in that slot and it gets a 3k power boost specifically a gen zero character correct um however this deck pretty much everything you're going to be saving which is going to be your soras they are gen zero um so I, that's not really a big thing with this deck but there are a few cards like your Matsuri um and that will not be affected by this mm -hmm. but overall most of your cards that you'll be wanting to save is exclusively for your big sora so having that power pump um to help crash into and crash over standby boards is pretty nice it's also a self -tap, self -tap, yeah self tap salvage brainstorm so i mean you'll you'll never be for uh, for lack of your brainstorm in this deck running four of them Uh, going to the next, we have the Hachima. Uh, when this attacks, you can power pump 1k. Again, helps you if you have to swing this in with your Miko to really try to pump over and get that reverse. And when this becomes reversed, top check three. Uh, if you have a climax in those, you can add it to hand, ditch another card. So this is just your climax assurance, making sure you can get those bars to your hand or get the standby in your hand to try to get it cheat out that to your change your target here which mm -hmm. we'll get into after a bit as soon as we can uh, next is the zero zero robico um on play uh choose two of your characters in your waiting room shuffle them to your library and then power pump 1k cross turn this is really important for this deck specifically because Sora spawns from deck. So being able to put two more Soras back into your deck just helps assure the fact that you're not going to only be able to spawn one. Um, and its other effect is 
when a climax is placed, you can pop it back and pump 1k to another mm-hmm. character cross turn as well. So 2k power pump and puts your your pieces back into your deck that you're going to need to search next turn and opens up that space on your board for your standby. So okay. does a lot of rolls for the deck. Yeah, that, that makes a lot more sense. I was not aware that the Sauras spawned from deck, so this card is mm-hmm. much more relevant than I thought it was in addition to just being one of the... Uh, one of those profiles that every standby deck plays the pop back to hand when you play a climax to uh to free up a slot for your standby first sora plays from hand and then it spawns the other two from deck oh so. okay it's one of those gotcha 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 yep uh next is our climax swapper uh the watts make climax swapper um at the end we'll also mention some slight tweaks you can make if you uh aren't really super interested in playing the stock swap, I think it's important, but just to threaten that to your opponent and make them stock conscious the entire game. However, if you're you know dead set on not ever playing that, you can always switch over to the Luna green one. But I think this, in general, I believe is the better card. Um, it's just your basic Climax swap, pay one, discard a Climax from hand, and salvage a Climax from waiting room. However, this I also think is still a decent attacker because when damage is canceled, it goes to stock. Helps keep your stock threshold, um, which is four, going into your turn to spawn all your Soras. Mm. So, helps you hit that stock threshold if it damage is canceled, and just your Climax Swapper is important to have in general. Next is the Choco Drop Salvage. Um, again, it's another way to guarantee that you have your one Sora in hand. And it can also mill three, so if you don't have any, if you don't have your two one engrave, or you don't have your sore engrave or hand, and you're just trying to hit it, this is just another way to help dig for it, and again, ensure that everything's set up, because this combo can become live at level one, and this is part of the tools that helps you get that set up. Mm-hmm. Yeah, mill- also, power pumps 1k. Mm-hmm. Yeah, mill three is uh, not a small amount of mill, especially when you're digging through your deck trying to get a, sta- a specific standby target in there. Plus, uh, it gives you the option for a little bit of a- additional selectivity uh, over the course of the game. So, I like it. Yep. Next, we have this Kanata. Um, on play, you can choose up to two Hall Alive characters in your hand and put those into your stock in any order. Um, and on play, um, this also gets 1500 power. So if you get it opening, um, a good thing you could do is hold it, and then you can play this to help stock charge you if you're really had to dig and were a little st- and had to overextend your stock. This can help refill that really quickly to help get your stores live and on board. Um, also, if you're just really desperate, I mean, it's a 3,500 beater on turn, so it can help clear some of those problematic cards. Do, do you usually have the hand to, uh, to fill, so, fill the extra two stocks should you need it? Does this um, it's, it's possible. I mean, really, you're not... After your sores become live, you're extremely hand light. Mm-hmm. So this is just ways to help fill with clean stock. You can pay out some others. Um, it's it's a cute card. Uh, there's it's obviously very niche and not. You have to be very careful when you play this. Um, you don't just want to always stock your entire hand and then you're all out. But for the the cases where you are having to overextend your stock to get your pieces and to shuffle them back in and make sure that you're going to be able to set up your board. You want to make you need to have that four stock threshold, and I this see. is just a quick way to guarantee it because once the source hit board, that's your entire game. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, I guess since the uh, the game plan of this deck is so focused, a little bit of extra assurance is uh, is definitely helpful. Next is the Miko Drop Searcher. Um, again, easy way to get your pieces if you already have your. 2-1 engrave um, going in, you can just grab your, your big Sora, and you're all set to roll for your your first level, or your second level 1 turn. 
um, or first level two turn if you end up getting knocked straight up. So this is just, again, extra assurance, gets your selectivity, helps you get the cards you need. Um, and it's a pretty big, big attacker with pretty much a irrelevant drawback. Mm -hmm. I mean, pay two encore is nothing. This card is absolutely fantastic and stays relevant throughout the game. Um, and the reason why we have so many of those power pumps is for our level one combo. This is the Miko standby combo. If you have two, or if you have another Hall Alive character, it gets 2k, so it is 55 on turn. And on reverse, if you have a climax down, choose a character in waiting room, return it to hand. Um, you have a lot of ways to power pump that we've went through. Um, the next card we're going to mention also. Um, that also gives some power pump, but this isn't the absolute worst thing if you're not able to get a bunch of reverses. This is, it's just an extra bonus to help refill your hand and really start, scal or your sculpt is so thin and so lean, mm. you're not really in a big rush to get everything. Um, once you have your one, your combo, your Sora, and your bar in hand... All you have to do is, you know, start the turn with some stock. So this just helps Assure get some hand in case, you know, they break your board or something goes wrong. Allows you to pivot a little bit. Um, okay. Notably, this is, you know, only 55k on its own. So trying to play this into big standby boards, you might not ever get your reverse, but still helps set up with the standby. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was about to ask since the deck is so focused, how uh, reliant you are on hitting the reverses off these Mikos. But I think it's, it, in my understanding, it's more like you hit level one, you slam the standby, you stand by out the 2-1 Sora, and then if you get any reverses, it is a bonus. Yeah, okay. yeah, it's just extra bonus. Um, again, you need, one, you need one character in hand, which is your Sora. So everything else is just bonus and just helps assure that your game plan goes accordingly, so... No, no major concern if you're not able to get that reverse, but it's always nice to have in case you do. Hmm. Uh, and then another way to help assure that we have that two one in grave and to or uh, the Sora in hand or the two one in grave, as well as power pump our Miko even more just to help get it up there, is discard a Hall Life character on hand and. Once you do, reveal top card and add any character level X or lower where X is the level of said revealed card. This can dump your 2-1 if you open it. And after, you know, if you don't have other ways to get it engraved, so it can just assure you're getting the right cards in there. You're able to search and get more tech cards in hand um, to help you pivot whichever way you need. And it helps Power Pump to get that Miko over as well. Uh, next is the Changer, um, three copies. This is a level assist, and when this card is placed from stage to hand, you can ditch a card and add the three two into your hand. So if you don't get this, you know, get this standby in earlier, you can always just hard play it from hand. That would add one additional stock to your threshold, so you will be at a five stock threshold at level two. However, um, it still, you know, helps assure that this is going to pop off, whether it be at level one or two. Um, it's very consistent, and it's just pay two, sack this, and at the start of climax phase, if you do, you can put the three two from hand into the slot where this character was, and it gets an additional thousand power. So it helps your sores be even bigger. Um, they're still they're already a pretty you know, pretty thick stat line, um, and it's just a, a level assist that you don't mind having behind it go forward um, if you need to. Mm -hmm. um, next is another, what I like to call a cute card, um, very niche situations where this thing can be super beneficial to you. Um, this is another level assist. This is the 2-1 Toa um, on play. You reveal the top. If it's a level one or lower, you get a free stock. So it can pay for itself right away. 
Um, and then also um, you can sack this and choose one of your opponent's characters and move it into an empty slot on their stage. So if if your opponent crashes a lane on their turn and they have a they have something that's say giving hexproof to their board because notably your your combo does target. If it gives hexproof to things in front, you can pull that up, you can swing into it and eliminate that for the next turn. As well as if they have a card that is too big to hit over at the moment, but will lose power next turn that does not have hexproof and they leave a back row slot, you can push it away. It, away. Um, mm -hmm. it just gives you a nice little cute options for niche situations. I guess if, if you're playing against Attack on Titan, though, you're uh, you're kind of screwed because Armin in the back row that gives <laughs> hexproof is also right. hexproof himself. So Yeah, that is that is a matchup where you do not feel good at all through the entire game because you're I mean you're just playing your big beaters and pretty much at that point your Soras won't be neg soling but they'd still be pretty beefy and not and making them lose board every turn so yeah. at that point you're just playing a war of attrition and the the main part of this deck is the 3-2 Sora um, if you have two or more other Hall Alive characters, this gains 2k power. So on its own, it sits 11. If it is spawned off of Changer, it is 12. Uh, with Climax down, it is 13 cross turn and 14 on attack. Mm -hmm. So pretty good power level without any assists besides the initial change. Um, and you, its effect is you just pay one, and when this is played from hand or library, you can search your deck for another copy of itself, put it on the stage, which then can do the same thing. So that's how you get triple combo guaranteed off every time, as long as that you have two more copies in deck. Very stock light helps you set this up pretty quickly. And the climax combo itself is if this is in your front row and you have four or more other characters, so full field, until the end of your opponent's next turn, this gets an additional thousand power. And at the start of your opponent's attack phase, choose one of their characters and minus two soul. So typically, once you get this out, you're going to be sitting there with 13 or 12k bodies on board and negs and minus six soul. Once you get this out at level one, uh, if you do, which you have a lot of assurance ways to ensure that, um, it's going to be very hard for your opponent to push damage because even when they're slamming climax with that extra soul they're still having to trigger to do anything so mm -hmm. it can be very annoying to try to deal with at early levels yeah as we stand in the english meta right now about a month before hollow lives release to my knowledge there is not very much hex proof at all running around mm -hmm. so this deck yeah. this deck should do pretty well yeah um, a couple of a couple of decks that i know of besides Let's mentioned Attack on Titan. Um, if they are playing an Alitization Sword Art deck, mm -hmm. they have the um, what's it called? Uh, the the Integrity Knights. Yeah. Yeah. The the one that gives all of your Integrity Knights hexproof. It gives it gives them all hexproof, and the, I the forgot J the JC. Yeah. JC. That's yeah. the that's what I was looking for. So um, that's that's another card yeah, or that, deck that's and that we might see. It's a very cheap deck. I know we covered it in a deck tech earlier mm -hmm. um it's a nice a nice budget deck that can still keep up so that's yeah. something that we you might want to look out for as well the only but, the only other one i can think of would be would be seven deadly sins with the meliodas finisher especially mm -hmm. if that becomes relevant with the second set in a couple yeah of the finishers here. themselves um however if this gets off early enough you won't you know, you're not gonna. Nothing else would have the hex proof. Yeah. Besides or, the Meliodas. Or if they but. leave a, or if they leave a slot, you can drag up the Elizabeth and kill it. Yep. So a couple of ways, and again, same thing with the other decks. That we, um, with the exception of Attack on Titan, um, if they do leave an open slot, that's that's where that, the F Toa can be used to help get rid of those hex proof, creators. Um. Finishing out with the last few level threes here, we have the 3-2 early play Fabuki. Um, if you have two or fewer, you can early play it. Um, it is a 10-5 on play, and on play heal. 
the main purpose of this is this is your healer in your deck. Um, notably, the Sora does not heal. So this is a way to make sure that, you know, if you need to, you can always heal down. Um, two or less condition isn't nearly as good as full field, especially when you're able to spawn your combo so easily. But it's still, you know, still a solid profile overall. Yeah, you, you don't have a ton of deck speed in this deck. You have the Fubuki Chiris and your Brainstorms, I guess, during main phase is about it. You have the... Mm -hmm. The Hachima, uh, Climax, Rizes as well, but they, they don't go off until combat. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, next is the 3-2 Miko. Uh, this is another Brainstorm. This is a Res 2 Salvage Brainstormer. Um, and if you play this from hand as well, another healer. Um, and it is a Frontal 2k Assist. So this is a good standby target. I know normally when you have to choose to stand by your, your last card to really power up your board, you know, playing over a Brainstormer sometimes is something you don't want to do. However, with this card, you still get to keep your Brainstorm and you still and you get a nice 2K power pump. Make sure your walls never fall down. And finally, as I mentioned... Earlier is your monstery stock swap. Um, it's just went on play from hand, pay one, and stock swap. And also, when you use or when you use a ability, this gains X power. X is equal to your number of back or your opponent's back rows times a thousand. So it can be 12k on its own. So not not a bad stat line as well. Um, but overall, this is mostly just to have the threat of stock swap, make sure your opponent does not just build up a disrespectful number of stock against you and allow you to ensure that uh, you can push for damage if you know it push them over refresh or if they're about to go over. Or Yeah, that's what I meant to say. <laughs> so mm -hmm. push you over refresh and make sure that they can't build up all that stock on you. But overall, um, your deck here's the deck list one more time. Again, very straightforward deck. You're you're trying to get out um, your Sora's as early as possible. Um, when you play your standby, you're really trying to stand by your two one Sora's to change into your three two from hand next turn. So potentially get this out at level one. Mm -hmm. um, it is a fragile strategy if your opponent is playing. It has ways to out your thing such as hexproof um, it can create some problems but the fact that you can get this live so early and create a lot of problems makes this a interesting and unique deck um, makes you, you run very light again if you spot if you are able to stand by in your 2-1 at level one all you need is four stock and a the three two sore in hand and the bar combo so two cards in hand and four stock, you get triple combo off at level one, neg souling six souls. Mm -hmm. So it can be very annoying to play into. Um, but yeah, the deck is extremely fun. Um, I like it a lot. It gives you, again, you don't have as much options as you do, similar to our last video with the Rusia. It gives you a lot of tech options. This is, again, very straightforward. Um, stick to your game plan and make sure they cannot play or deal damage to you is your main thing here. Mm -hmm. So do the Sora combos, the level threes, mm -hmm. normally live cross turn when they come down? Uh, yeah. So when they come down at level, if they come down at level one, uh, they're definitely living cross turn. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um, they're so they're twelve Ks. So if we're looking at other decks in the meta that really want to threaten those, um, Mushoku, if they have two Galanes. And a 2k counter in hand can back up to t can well no they won't be able to back up over them yeah R ruby because might be able to crack attack. a lane ruby, on, on attack Ru well ruby would only they'd have to have the first one be able to get over oh yeah ruby needs because to you have three second. of the, you have three on board so I can't think of anything at level one that's threatening to crack this off the top of mind um, again you'll have 
twelve Ks. Yeah, it, which it just, on attack. Mm -hmm. It just felt kind of weird to me that you're sacking your level assist, which you want on the mm -hmm. board to give to give your level threes power to play your level threes. But I guess at level one, they're uh, they're a little bit of a problem to hit over, and you're playing with the Toa uh, four level assist total in this deck, so you'll you'll get one eventually. So and then also um, if you if you whiff your bar and you don't have your stop your climax swap and you have your standby in hand you can always stand by in your miko at level two as well mm -hmm. for that extra 2k pump but yeah um a couple of kind of cards to consider um oops, oh, that should be a three um is if we don't if you don't want to play the stock swap again i recommend you do um but if you don't instead of the crone runner you can play the aqua ricky um it says 3500 in the center lane and on death pay one choose a character in your waiting room and put it to the bottom of stock and reveal top two if you add all care or up to two characters from those reveal cards to your hand and put the rest in waiting room um so this would be your new your main starter if you aren't playing for the stock swap and then you can also switch your climax swapper to this luna so it's a 3k um just a basic climax swap but it cannot side attack so that's what the opportunity cost or the efficiency cost whatever the official bushiro term is there for it um for the 3k power line is yeah. that it can't side B bigger body but it, it doesn't have the ability to go to stock and it's green, so it's uh, it's more it's more in your colors, but it cuts the uh, the number of yellow cards in your deck for that Matsuri stock swap as well. Um, and then other cards uh, to possibly consider would be the 2K counter. Um, if again this will help guarantee, I don't think any board, any set can clear a 14K at level one. Um, and I know, even at level two, that can be a struggle for a lot of decks mm. to clear. Um, so if you want this instead, you can always cut the um, Kanata Zero, the Stock Charger, and the 2-1 Toa um, level assist. Instead of playing those, I would rec or you can play this instead. Um, this will just help ensure that your sores keep living cross turns. Um, another option to consider. And then also, instead of the Matsuri, um, if you're cutting that as well, you can also have the choice to play the Gen Zero event. Um, this is another way to assure that you never lose your Sora. Um, you choose your character, one of your characters, and they get both abilities um, during your turn or during this battles that involve this card. You do not take damage from effects of your opponent's cards. And this cannot be reversed. So if they have an on reverse finisher, this can just completely shut that down and stop from auto burns as well. Um, just another card that you might want to consider in one of those slots, um, be it the two one, the Toa. Um, if you don't want to play the if you don't want to play stock swap, this is another card that you might want to consider there as well. But yeah, other than that, um, any thought, any other thoughts or opinions that you have into this, Brian? Um, I, I'm a fan of this list. I one of my favorite decks in the game is uh, is Standby Choice Mob, which is another deck that plays very similarly to this with another with a very focused play style. Uh, so I I do enjoy these um, these decks that are extraordinarily powerful when they pop off but are cripplingly cripplingly bad if you uh if you have a rough game <laughs> right uh, high high roll focused decks whatever whatever you want to call them but i do uh i do enjoy the play style and i, I will be checking this one out when when hollow Life comes yeah but uh here at the end here we just have the normal links we always include um for the card games and competitive wife's discords uh, the Facebook Global and NA Communities and Weiss Fight. We do not own any of these. However, they are 
great tools and resources for our community. And with that, uh, thanks for watching and have a good night, guys.